Coach O was here at uh, in the middle of hour one at 7.30, just like he is every Tuesday. A couple of good, uh, good news items from Coach O, if you missed it. Uh, he was talking a little bit about the quarterbacks. Went in-depth on all three scholarship guys, including Miles Brennan, his weight, what he expects from the starting quarterback this season, both Max Johnson and T.J. Finley. And he also laid out the quarterback landscape in the state over the next six to seven years in recruiting. He can't, he can't specifically uh, talk about guys uh, like Walker Howard and Arch Manning and Eli Holstein, uh, guys that, that have LSU offers. Walker Howard's a commitment. Uh, that, that that made that news official on Friday. So good stuff. But I think the thing that's going to live on is that Nick Storrs, uh, the uh, the LSU baseball player who was a uh, a pitcher and still on the team, uh, he's still on the LSU baseball team, uh, was a was a a multi sport standout in uh, in New York in, in the state of New York. He was out of Brooklyn, New York, coming out of high school, um, and had a decision to make once his prep career was over. Decided to go to LSU. To play baseball, he's battled some injury. He's been on the field. He's been off the field, but he's now working out with the LSU football team. And Ed Ogeron spoke about kind of what specifically they had expect, uh, you know, kind of expected for him. And you know, he's a big tight end that goes into a tight end room now with Eric Gilbert, Cole Taylor, Jamal Pettigrew, uh, you know, some big guys that can play. But you hear the coach talk about stores and. I don't think that this is for show. You know, I don't think that this is kind of, you know, go see if you can still play type deal. I mean, now that he's here, now that he's on the team, I think that they expect him to maybe right. make a contribution. Yeah, and, and then it does become interesting what is Pettigrew's role in all of this. And just some size alone at 6'6 six, six and a half, 250, you don't think of Pettigrew as necessarily a, a pass catcher. And I guess same could be said about stores. But this year, do they – work in more of a blocking tight end at times, right? Do I, I do think LSU will maybe run the ball a bit more this season, just given kind of where their relative talents lie. I could be wrong on that. Uh, but if you do, then guys with the size of a stores and a pedigree, they would seem like perfect kind of blocking tight ends. And the best part about a blocking tight end is if they're super tall and athletic enough to catch, then you kind of hit the defense with the okie doke. So, yeah, there's – look, the bottom line is – they have a really, really nice personnel grouping in that tight end room, and that's not even getting into, as Coach mentioned, uh, Moffitt or uh, Torrey Carter, who still, my favorite touchdown that wasn't a touchdown last year was him against Mississippi State, NFL blitz, mm. bodying that dude. <laughs> no respect for pass interference, bodying that dude, and then jumping up in the air and catching that touchdown. I mean, it was awesome until... You saw the replay, and he just – Troy Carter just can't help it. He, he's just, he's just too mean, physical, dude. The kickoff return team at Georgia. Oh, that was fantastic. He, he's, just, he's just too physical. But I also got – I'm not going to lie. I love having a guy from the Bronx on the team. Yeah. I get, yeah. Little – I hope stores – I've never really heard him talk. I, I just hope he has, like, a New York accent. He's just kind of fed up with everything. I just want to try football. Your baseball wasn't working out. So I'm looking I'm, – I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. It'd be great. That would be great, especially if he's like a player. Daniel Vioski on Twitter at Go Edits. Gilbert Taylor stores all six five and a half. Put them on the field all at the same time. I, I mean, mean, you wouldn't, but that'd just be that'd be wild from just a matchup standpoint. I think they're gonna have Taylor and Gilbert on the field together in the red they'll, zone. They'll get look. I do not believe uh, we, we're always looking for differences between last year's offense and this year's offense. I do not believe that LSU will be as married to that Fab Five that they had last season. They just had such a secure and solid grouping with Clyde, the three receivers, and uh, why am I blanking? Uh, Anna Moss. Moss and on Thad Moss last year that it, it just made too much sense to keep them all in the game. When you look at this roster, it almost makes too much sense to get a little more creative in that personnel and force teams – to have to adjust. So I doubt all three of them end up on the field at the same time. But like Jordy said, I think two of them certainly will at times. But as exciting as the stores news is, Jordy, what I actually like the most out of everything that Coach O just said was that on Saturday morning, the team was out there practicing. It's good news. Because to me, when I heard that Joe Burrow had every position group doing that, and it wasn't Joe Burrow, right? We've always talked about how every – Position group had their own kind of sub leader. It was like Cushenberry, Richard Lawrence, Delbray, the list goes on and on. When I heard they were practicing on Saturday, that was something I had never heard before. And to get college kids at that level of commitment is not always easy. So to hear that this team has carried that forward, I think speaks 
very highly of something that they're talking about all the time, which is culture, right? The LSU standard of performance. When I hear about the new team, this year's team, waking up and doing that on Saturday, it speaks, it's not just lip service anymore, right? The culture is real, it's established, and players are buying in. And the thing about culture is it goes old to young. The upperclassmen lead the way, the lowerclassmen learn, but then a couple of years later, they are the one passing on those messages. And, and so to see yeah. it perpetuate here means that you're going to establish that culture for, for years to come. Kind of like the Devin White, Damone Clark yeah. lineage. If you remember a couple of years back, Devin White was speaking about a young guy in the program that was following every move that, my, that White was making as the Butkus Award winner, and that was Damone Clark. Now it's his time. Yeah. And you look at Damone Clark, he's got guys like Josh White that are now in the, pot, uh, in the pipeline coming up that he's going to mentor and be able to teach that LSU standard of performance to yep. that now is going to carry on. I mean, these Saturday morning practices with the full team feel like in a couple of years that they're going to be commonplace. I mean, if the head coach is speaking about it in year two like he was by just looking out of his window and seeing his full team practicing on a Saturday morning voluntarily for the second year in a row, that's culture. Yep. I mean, that's habit. I agree. You know?